My father and I own Flag Coal Company number 75, a 040 tank engine that uh, we bought and restored in 91 to 2001. My son was 19 at the time, and 19-year-olds aren't the easiest to work with. We now have four of them. That's kind of a father-son hobby that's gotten way out of hand is what it is. We've been from Michigan, uh, Indiana, Connecticut to Oklahoma City, Kansas, uh, Wisconsin, Alabama, Florida, North and South Carolina, Ohio. <laughs> 19 different states and 28 different railroads. Hauling this engine around the country, giving people rides. I work for the railroad for a living during the week, and on the weekends I go play train with my engines. <laughs> it's been a fun ride so far. This week we're at the Walkersville Southern Railroad in Walkersville, Maryland. Walkersville? Uh, is less than an hour from both Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, Maryland. We've brought John and Barney here uh, for the past five years. Oh, yeah, well, it's good seeing you again, and stay out of trouble. Since we brought them here, <laughs> our sales have been booming. This year, we were sold out through most of the summer. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Before our first train ran through the year. We call it the halo effect. Uh, John and Barney come and visit us for three weekends in the spring, and we've gotten residual sales, internet exposure, and we've had increased ridership all year long uh, since we've added steam to our lineup, and, and that's been a big bonus. There's some interesting stories about how we revived the line. Um, the line was originally a Pennsylvania railroad track down from Columbia and York, PA to Frederick. It was put out of service in 1972 when Hurricane Agnes washed our bridge into the river. The bridge and the bridge beam sat in the water for 20 years. In 1994, we got some assistance to lift the old beams out of the river. It was set on new piers, and in 1995, the first trains crossed the Monoxy again, uh, pulled by a Walkersville engine. I really like coming to Walkersville because there's some, there's some neat characters here and it's a neat little ride. You see the smoke? Hi. Is this your brother? Yeah. I'm going to want to give the camera crew and you people at home just a very general safety briefing. Most of all this is common sense. I am the worst when it comes to safety rules. I mean, the guy I used to work for, he was my safety instructor, he'll tell you, Barney, go do something stupid. All you had to do is follow me, and I did something stupid. Don't step on top of the rail. Uh, John, not to pick on you, I saw you do it several times this morning. And the reason I say that is, it looks dry, but most times the rail are slippery. You trip and fall on this rail, where's your head gonna hit? It's gonna be the next one over. So just get in the habit of stepping over them. Another thing is, see that space between the rails? There's absolutely no reason for any of us to be there. Unless you're a train, you don't need to be there. I understand about getting your shots and everything you want, but I just assume that you live to get a shot rather than not become the shot. Another thing to be aware of is when you come across in front of the, like the end of this caboose or the train or anything, always assume this stuff will move without warning. You really can't tell right here, but where we're standing, it is uphill like you cannot believe that way. If those cars right there were to come, start rolling, they'd be four miles that way before they'd stop. It doesn't look like it, but once they start moving, they will go. Believe and you me. you won't hear it. And you won't hear it. They'll be all, they'll go on their own, quiet, and away they go. <laughs> Believe me, I, I left a car set, and I come back, and it was six miles away. I been there done that. <laughs> it, it, it's funny now, but at the time, it's not funny because you start thinking about all the things that could have happened. I've been through rules classes where the safety rule book is that thick, and there's hundreds of rules in those books, and they're all there for a reason, because somebody screwed up and got hurt. I got to the point where I somewhat like you guys. All right, so. <laughs> I'm saying a lot because he just met you. <laughs> if you don't have to be on the equipment, don't be on it. If you don't have to be on the tracks, don't be on them. That's just that simple. I'm glad we had a little chat with the camera guys and, and some of the very, very basic safety stuff because they've, they've done some things that really wasn't in their best interest. And it's, you can't blame them, they don't know. Yeah, but I, I, they, I, we really don't want anybody to get hurt. 
No. And, uh, it, you know, this stuff out here, it, it isn't going to, there isn't going to be forgiveness. There's 20 trains a day going by within 50 feet of us. We can't afford to have a mess right. up. Hopefully it's sunk in, I hope. Walkersville's been here for 25 years, and it's really, it's really a, like John and Barney, it's been a hobby gone wild. 25 years ago, the rail line was overgrown with brush and trees. Our first members attacked it with sickles and chainsaws. Our first engine, the dinky number one, which is still on static display, is a gas engine. And true story, we had to change the spark plugs when we got to the end of the line, just so we could make it back. And that was our first excursion train. You fast forward 25 years, now we have five locomotives, two train sets, um, and we're hauling roughly 20,000 people a year. It's really amazing. Right now, we have seven and a half miles run north towards Woodsboro, in addition to south towards Frederick. Woodsboro has a little station built by the Pennsylvania Railroad that matches our station. We'd love to go from one town to another, and hopefully in the future, we can run a trip from Walkersville to Woodsboro. That's on our agenda. I've really been kind of impressed how Paul, Wayne, and the rest of the guys here at Walkersville Southern have been able to improve the, the ridership numbers and by offering all the neat things like the dinner train and the other neat stuff that they do. So this is the dining car. This is the dining car. All right. The Southampton. It's an ex-Long Island uh, passenger coach that we converted into a dining car. Oh, why? Built in 1931. Uh, when we found it, it was up in the West Virginia Northern. Trees growing up in it. Oh, so this, when this started out, this is just like the other cars in our train? Yep. The commuter seats and everything? Yep. Well, this one didn't even have seats. It didn't have a floor. It had trees growing up in it. But same thing. And, wow. A uh, little bit of work, a little bit of sanding, a little bit of rust this removal. This is really nice. I've never been in here before. Well, we normally don't let grubby guys like you in the train. <laughs> <laughs> but we can seat about 30. When we get here, it's all nice white tablecloths and flowers. Oh, okay. And a cheese so, tray and everything. And um, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't envision you. And are you, are you, are you part oh, of the wait staff? No, 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 no. <laughs> we have, good. we have professionals coming and do that. Uh, okay. Again, who would want to eat from grubby train guys? <laughs> <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> we started dinner trains uh, about five years ago, mm -hmm. and we didn't know if if anyone would want to pay sixty-five or seventy dollars for a ticket. So we tentatively built a dining car, and as soon as we started selling them, they sold out. Now, you, you cater everything on, and that's what they do in the other car. Right, then. right. We have an old troop sleeper uh, built uh, for World War II troop transport. Okay. That was our first passenger car, and now it's our food service car. So it's, it's pretty good. Oh, okay. It with the kitchen so the, the caterers set it up, and yep. then... Caterers set it up there, and they bring a whole staff. They got a chef in the back and a wait staff out front. And the you got a bartender? We don't serve alcohol on the train, but oh, uh, okay. we could if you wanted, <laughs> if you wanted to do a soft drink bartender. So back here is the troop sleeper, which is our food service car. Oh, they, okay, so they hand the food out through the little window? Well, she brings it out on trays and everything. It's just to make it nice, nice looking. They, all, they bring the food all prepared and, and set it up in here and uh, stage it, and it's a four-course meal, so. You know, is, is this going to be my table? No, no, we put you in the back. In the back? In the way in the back. Oh. We don't even want to. We don't even want to get the kitchen staff all nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but you got stove, you got ovens, sinks, Thanks, yeah. coffee Everything. pot, which is important on a railroad. Oh, gotta have coffee. Everything is here to do what you want to do. Yep. Cool. Now, how often? How often do you do you run it? We run dinner. first and third Saturdays. The first Saturday is just a regular dinner, and the third Saturday is a murder mystery dinner. Oh, okay. So we have a little troop of actors that come on board, and they, somebody gets killed, and oh. the, the, the diners now, have to figure it, it out. You getting pretty people liking it, or well, right now we're sold out till August, and we'll and we're already taking oh. sales for our October. The murder mystery dinner trains our costume one in October, and that's real popular. Oh, we get dressed up and everything for it. Cool. 
This is, this is really nice. I'm glad it's I'm glad it's working out for you. I've seen a lot of other places try it, but it seems like it's working pretty good for you here. Yeah, it, it has turned out to be a real popular. Uh, and you got event. somebody who plays the piano and yep, the whole nine yep. yards, huh? And actually, this is believe it or not, is a player piano. Oh really? Yep. I'd Thanks. like to have one of those. You put the oh, reels in there and, oh. and uh, fire it up, and it's a player piano. Cool. Well, that's neat. Although it's perpetually out of tune because it's riding around in the train. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a good thing I'm not running a train, otherwise I probably would knock it over. <laughs> so we're really fortunate, but we're in a rural county. Our track runs through the farmlands, past the Catoctin Mountains. It's a close day trip for many of our passengers and we're lucky to have some nice scenery. We run over two bodies of water, a creek and a bridge. The line runs past Barrick's farm, is the oldest farm in Frederick County, still in operation. There's still a hundred cows are gonna moo at you. They're either running towards or running away from the train every time we, we drive by. We come close to the city of Frederick and pass, uh, have a great view of the Catoctin Mountains along the way. The mountains look almost purple uh, in the fall, and it's a great view. Uh, not far from major cities, but you really feel like you're in a, a scenic rural setting. Paul is one of the go-to volunteers they have here at the Walkersville Southern. I think he's also on the board of directors, and he's responsible for quite a bit of some of the work you're on the cars here lately. John, I want to show you this car. Okay, is it, does it have a name? This is the Meadowlark. It was a permanent car on a train called the Lark in California. Oh, it weighs yeah. 100 tons. Hmm. It has six bedrooms, six toilets, and it's all still here from the 20s. The fixtures, the fabric, the beds, the sinks, it's pretty amazing. So most of the everything's cars- Everything's here. Everything's here. Most of the work we do here, we're just refurbishing cars, making yeah. them go again, but this car we're gonna restore. We're gonna keep everything. We're re restoring the same wood, stripping and staining. We figured this was a movie star train because in the 20s, you know, everyone didn't have a vehicle. Yeah. This is, the, this is how they travel. The porter would even shine your shoes and pull them out of your footlocker while you slept its own rolling hotel. Got a toilet there and a sink here. You tilt that up and that drains it. <laughs> That's pretty neat. I guess you're supposed to flush it before you shut the door. <laughs> it would help, I bet it wouldn't. It? <laughs> well, that looked like the most important piece of equipment in there. Well, it is. I'm giving you that. <laughs> no, man, it was obviously flopping up and down, so I was interested in how it worked. <laughs> now, what's it? Oh, man, why? This is a solarium end. We have requests for weddings and special parties. We're going to turn this into a cathedral of railroading so we can do some special events in here. And as you can see, the woodwork is still in great condition. Uh, it's pretty amazing. It's all original still. We're gonna uh, strip and restore the paint. We remove the steam heat. We're adding electric heat, adding air conditioning, and... Somebody's already, already done a tremendous amount of work in it. Yeah. We do a lot of work here. It's gonna be slow going, isn't it? <laughs> it's been, it's been. Yeah. But it's something special for the railroad. Yeah, it will be. One of the reasons for our growth, or the reason, I think, is our people. Um, we really make this place about our people, our volunteers, and passengers. Without our people, the trains would just be junk rusting in the yard. Our volunteers uh, have really been attracted to STEAM, and our volunteer group has grown since we've added STEAM. This year, we signed up almost 80 volunteers through our program, and it's an amazing group. We have master mechanics, folks that are just dedicated to the track, some folks are just interested in running the trains. Some folks just want to do restoration, and it's an amazing group that all fits together and, and really helps us grow.
We installed a thousand ties here last year along our line just with volunteers. If all the trains fell off the bridge into the river, I think our people would cobble together wheelbarrows and we'd still be running trains. Our volunteers are skilled. We make sure they have a good time. Uh, we make sure our passengers have a good time and uh, hopefully it'll last for many years to come. What this is, this is the blower valve. This is what shoots steam up the stack. It gives an engine an artificial draft, so the fire burns better. In this valve, there's steam all around the stem. And what keeps the steam from leaking is what they call packing. And this, you know, you can pipe, tighten the packing up on the nut for so many times until it's just plain there's no more packing left. And that's what we've done is, this engine, we've had it running for five years, it's the first time we've had to repack it. And it was right in the cab, blowing right at your face. Yeah. I think that's all you're gonna get in it. Put the nut on and see how much. Yeah, we could put a little more in. That's good enough. It's still got a whole bunch of turns. No, you're not gonna put any more in it. And yeah, then I'll have to fix it again. In five years' time. By then, you're probably so old and crotchety, you won't want to be up in the cab, and I won't want to launch you to deal with it. I'll go put it back together. And don't get it too tight, otherwise you can't yes, turn the stem. Yes, 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 yes. You got it together yet? Well, I'm working on it. Don't get in a big hurry. Good thing we only have to do this once every five years. I got to hook the rod back up. Just make sure you don't get it so tight that you can't turn the rod. Well, I haven't even pack tightened the packing yet. All right, well, I'm telling you that when you tighten the packing, don't tighten it so tight. Well, just don't get all excited. Oh, my God, I can't turn it. I can't turn it. What the hell am I going to do? I told you not to tighten the packing knot. <laughs> Give me my ranch. <laughs> Damn kid. <laughs> ah, it feels good. Yeah. No, I lost my glove. Oh, right there. The gloves are on the floor. Okay. What else needs to be done before morning? Shake the issues out. Build a fire. The the throttle packing is leaking a little, but. I don't want to mess with it. Well, wait till it's it. not leaking. I didn't. I might even be able to tighten it a little. Well, bit. we'll tighten it when it's hot. Don't. Yeah. We won't mess with it dry. It's not. It's not leaking enough to worry about. Worry about. Right. Think it's time? Yeah, it's about time. We probably better get it over with. Okay, well, let's go. All right, here we go. I do, I really do. I've been looking forward to this all year long. <laughs> it's hard work eating all those hot dogs, so Dad and I took a little stroll down to the park. And look what we found. You see this old tire? Well, I, I saw the thing hanging here, so I thought the, the holder was neat, because it's a piece of bat rail. Oh, yeah, I didn't notice that. I just yeah. noticed it was a tire. Locomotive. Uh, that's, see, it didn't even hook fast. Oh, it just sits there. Yeah. But they they got a, a so wrench. You, what are you going to do with that? Well, hey, oh. don't that sound neat? 
Mm. Let's have it here. You try it once. Another laying there. One laying That's there. a tire there too. This tire really don't look that bad. No. I was pretty chewed up. I on wonder it. if these are. Huh. They're still Boy, good. It, it's still it's still vibrating and ringing. Yeah. Still feel it. Well, when we put new tires on 70 or uh, 126, we'll have to do this at home. Yeah. Maybe we could get this thing and cut it in two and pull it together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Oh. Look, come on. You I, I see how they did it. I thought they bent it. Oh, it's cut? It's cut. Oh, yeah. I thought they just bent it. That's what I was, I was so impressed about. They cut it. Ah, OK. Oh, it still worked good. It's still neat. Yeah. Well, let's. we better get we busy. We got busy. Let's go. Everybody is gearing up and loading up for the Cowboy Express. <laughs> Last ship of the day. Aboard. Welcome aboard the Rockerville Southern. Hi. Are you the sheriff? <laughs> I get a lot of enjoyment out of watching the little kids on the train because it is a big event for them and it's something that they haven't seen before and they're innocent and they, they're just fun to watch. It might look like real money, but it's pretty big. Well, you get 50 bucks. But you know what? The bad guys won't know the difference. Everybody having a good time? Y'all ready to get robbed? Yeah. Okay. And everybody's gonna donate! We got cowboys again today. Seems like everywhere we go, there's always somebody out to rob us. Yeah, well. It must be our personality or something that attracts them. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell anyone we're robbing the train! If you do, I'll come down and shoot you! <laughs> All right, brother. Put it in there! All right, great looking hat. Put that, oh, uh, put that gee guy in there. That's my mom! I can't move these pearls! What she said? <laughs> Walkersville Southern has been doing uh, themed train rides for years now. It's uh, everything from Civil War, Jesse James, uh, the Easter Egg, and Santa Claus. We're in church, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone's going to donate. I don't want to get killed. <laughs> this here is our 401k. And I got jewelry, too. We plan to retire early. Last time it was Dalton boys, now it's what, Cowboy Roy is after us? Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Did, did you notice that some of them are older yet than I am? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty concerned about it. A round of applause for the Walkersville Southern Railroad. Got all 
Lord Luke back at you. Right there. Yeah. On your chest. No. No, to the left. There was a um, um, listen, don't go into politics because your speeches are going to be way too long. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you, 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 were you supposed to give that up? I did. You did give it up? No, I didn't. You put it in and I put it up.